Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a complete course for the CCNP NCORE Enterprise Core exam. This course will cover all topics you need to know to pass the NCORE exam and make a big step towards your CCNP Enterprise certification. This video is an introduction to the course, so I will introduce the NCORE exam, what you can expect from this course, and also give some tips to help guide your studies. If you studied my CCNA course in the past, this course will be very similar in structure and style, but with a few changes. My name is Jeremy McDowell. I'm a senior network engineer and the creator of Jeremy's IT Lab, and I will be your instructor for this course. I'm very excited to present this course to you. My CCNA course has been a huge success and helped thousands of people study for and pass the CCNA exam, and I'm dedicated to making this course even better. Here's what we'll cover in this video. First, I will introduce the CCNP NCORE exam itself. Then I will compare it to the CCNA, which you hopefully have completed before starting this course. Then I will give some tips about how to study for the NCORE exam, and point out how your approach should be a bit different than for the CCNA. Then I will introduce the flashcards for the course, using the software Anki, and the labs for the course, using CML, Cisco Modeling Labs. So, what is CCNP NCORE? NCORE is the core exam for the CCNP Enterprise certification. Note that you might hear the exam name pronounced as ENCORE also. That seems to be the standard pronunciation. However, because NCORE stands for Enterprise Core and not Enterprise Core, I prefer to pronounce it NCORE. Now, there are other kinds of CCNP certification. For example, CCNP Security, CCNP Collaboration, CCNP Data Center, etc. Each of those CCNP certifications has a core exam you must pass. NCORE is the core exam for the CCNP Enterprise certification, and you must pass it as one requirement for the certification. If you passed your CCNA exam and are looking to go deeper into networking, I highly recommend pursuing the CCNP Enterprise certification. The other types of CCNP, such as security, data center, etc., are more advanced and probably should be left for after the CCNP Enterprise. To achieve the CCNP Enterprise, you must pass NCORE, as I just mentioned, and one of the following concentration exams. As you can see, there are quite a few. You are free to choose which one interests you the most, or you can pursue a few of them or even all of them. But my default recommendation is NRC. Implementing Cisco Enterprise Advanced Routing and Services. Studying NRC will really level up your knowledge of core networking technologies such as routing protocols. But that's just an aside. This course isn't focused on any of these concentration exams, but rather NCORE, the Enterprise Core exam. If you want more information about the CCNP Enterprise certification, NCORE, or any of the concentration exams, check out this page. As a final note about the core and concentration exams, you can take them in any order you like. Core first and then concentration, or concentration and then core. I personally recommend taking NCORE first, but others might recommend the other way around. It is important to note that the CCNA certification is not a prerequisite to take the NCORE exam or get your CCNP. However, it is highly recommended to study for and pass the CCNA exam before attempting NCORE. If you try to jump straight into NCORE without first passing the CCNA exam, you're not going to have a good time. My course and other CCNP level courses assume that you already have a CCNA level understanding of networking. So don't expect anything more than a quick review of the basics covered in the CCNA. For the most part, we are going to jump straight into the deep end of the pool and start exploring more advanced concepts. With that said, if you have already passed the CCNA exam, NCORE is the natural next step after the CCNA for a few reasons. First, the NCORE exam covers similar topics to the CCNA exam, but at a more advanced level. You will study network architectures, layer two switching, layer three routing, security, wireless, IP services, network automation, etc. Like the CCNA, the NCORE exam is very wide, covering many topics, but not so deep, at least compared to the concentration exams, which are more narrow, but also deeper, covering more details. 
However, compared to the CCNA exam, you definitely will go a lot deeper into various topics, so don't underestimate the depth of the Encore exam. CCNP means Cisco Certified Network Professional, so you need a professional level understanding of the topics on the exam. Now let's compare the CCNA certification and exam to Encore. Some of this will be obvious, but it's worth mentioning. First, the CCNA is an entry level certification. This means that no previous networking knowledge or experience is required or expected. Of course, if you do already have some knowledge or experience, that is helpful, but most CCNA courses such as my own will teach you from the bottom up. No assumed networking knowledge. On the other hand, NCORE and all other CCNP level exams are not entry level. As mentioned before, CCNA level knowledge of networking is assumed, so the course will only briefly review the basics of each concept before going into greater detail. So if you haven't studied for and passed the CCNA exam yet, I highly recommend you do before starting this course. Work experience in the networking field is not required, but recommended. However, I got my CCNP with no work experience and so have many other people. So don't be discouraged if you don't have any experience yet. It is still totally possible to study for and pass the NCORE exam. In CCNA courses, you can expect more hand-holding. The course should assume little or no previous knowledge of networking concepts, terms, etc. And questions should be expected and answered. However, at the CCNP level, you must be an independent learner. When you have questions, instead of immediately asking someone else to answer the question for you, you should try to answer it yourself first. Do a Google search, read some documentation, test it out in a lab, etc. Now, that doesn't mean you should never ask questions. Feel free to ask them whenever you have a question you can't find the answer to, even after searching. My Discord server is a great place to ask questions and discuss problems. There are lots of CCNA students, CCNP students, network engineers of various experience levels ready to help you out. I'm active on the server too, so I hope to see you there. Finally, a difference between this course and the CCNA course is that this course will consist of more, shorter videos, perhaps 10 minutes for the shortest videos and 30 minutes for the longest videos. The CCNA course often had videos of 40 or 45 minutes in length, but in this course, I will split those very long videos into multiple shorter videos instead. I just think that shorter videos are easier to manage for both myself and you all studying the course. Next, let me give you a few tips regarding how to study for the NCORE exam. First, it is very important to use multiple resources to study for CCNP level exams. I always recommend this for CCNA students too, but for CCNP level and above, it's absolutely essential. No one resource is going to give you everything you need and answer all of your questions. So I recommend using resources like video courses, such as the one you're watching now, books, documentation, such as Cisco documentation, RFCs, etc., as well as articles and blog posts you can find on Google. Use the exam topics list to guide your studies. A Google search for NCORE exam topics will give you Cisco's site as the top result. This is essential not just for NCORE, but any exam really. In the NCORE exam, there are six categories. Architecture, virtualization, infrastructure, network assurance, security, and automation, with various topics and subtopics in each category. The exam topics will tell you what Cisco expects you to know for the exam, so definitely bookmark that page. Also, Google searches are your best friend. This is true not just when studying for exams, but also in your job. Networking professionals and all IT professionals Google things all the time in their jobs, so it's important to get good at it now. If you Google a topic, you will likely find links to Cisco documentation, RFCs, articles, blog posts, etc. that answer your question. For example, if you're studying EIGRP, a Google search for Cisco EIGRP configuration will lead you to a Cisco guide called IP Routing EIGRP Configuration Guide, as well as other valuable resources. Using Google and other resources, you should develop your ability to find answers without a teacher directly giving you the answer. 
but let me repeat. This doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't ask questions. I am happy to help, and so are many other people on the Discord server. Finally, use practice exams to review and strengthen your weak points before taking the real exam. I highly recommend Boson XSIM for Encore. No other practice exams come close to it in terms of quality of questions and explanations. Next, let me introduce the flashcards for the course. Flashcards are a very helpful tool to remember what you studied. With that said, they are optional, so you don't need to use them. Different people prefer different study techniques, so you don't have to use the flashcards if you don't want to. The flashcard app we will use, Anki, is a very popular flashcard app available for Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. As a side note, Anki means memorization in Japanese. I originally used Anki when studying Japanese and then applied it to my study of networking. It worked really well for me, so that's why I decided to include Anki flashcards with my CCNA course and now my Encore course. I have gotten great feedback about the flashcards, so it seems many other people found them useful too. You can get Anki at apps.ankiweb.net, and the Anki documentation is also there, in case you have any issues with installing or using Anki. I recommend making your own flashcards while you study. Personally, I think the best flashcards are the ones you make yourself. However, due to popular demand, I will once again include a pre-made Anki flashcard deck with most videos of the course. If you're watching on YouTube, you can get access to the Google Drive with the files by going to this link, which I will include in the video description. Just follow the instructions on the page, and send me an email if there are problems. Note that when signing up, you may have to wait around 10 minutes for emails to arrive. Even if you do use my pre-made flashcards, feel free to edit, delete, or add cards as needed. If you don't like how I word something on a card, you can edit it. If you feel you don't need a certain card, delete it. If you think I should have added a card for a specific concept, feel free to make your own. And one recommendation. Do the scheduled flashcard reviews daily. If you miss a few days, the number of reviews will accumulate, and it will become harder and harder to catch up. This has happened to me many times in the past, and I end up with hundreds of cards accumulated that I need to review. So try to do the scheduled reviews every day. Next, another very important part of studying for the Encore exam is labbing. For the labs in this course, we will use CML, Cisco Modeling Labs. Now the image here isn't CML, but our old friend Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is a fantastic tool for labbing at the CCNA level, but not beyond. It's just too limited. Packet Tracer is a network simulator that uses software to run fake network devices and simulate their operations. They aren't real network devices routing and switching real packets and frames. The functionality in Packet Tracer is quite limited compared to real networking devices. With new updates, sometimes Cisco adds new commands to Packet Tracer, but still it supports only a fraction of the commands and features available on real Cisco devices. It supports most of what you need to lab for the CCNA, but not for Encore. That is unfortunate because Packet Tracer is free, easy to set up, and doesn't require a powerful computer to run. Those statements are not so true for CML, which is not free, not so easy to set up, and does require a fairly powerful computer, at least compared to Packet Tracer. So let's look at CML. At the CCNP level and beyond, I recommend CML for labs. Of course, buying actual network hardware is an option too, but in most cases that would be a lot more expensive than CML and a lot less convenient. CML is a network emulator, meaning it uses virtualization technology to run real Cisco iOS devices on your PC. CML is not free. A personal license costs $199 a year, and a personal plus license costs $349 a year. The personal license allows for up to 20 nodes, meaning 20 network devices in a lab. The only difference in the personal plus license is that it allows up to 40 nodes. I recommend the personal edition. We won't be doing any labs with over 20 devices in this course. Now, even the personal license at $200 might seem a bit expensive. Unfortunately, there just aren't any free alternatives available. Let me assure you that it is worth it though as an investment in your education and career in IT. 
you can wait for a sale if you want. For example, I got CML at 40% off during the Cyber Monday sale. Now, another downside of CML is that it requires much greater hardware resources than Packet Tracer because you're running real network devices. You can Google CML User's Guide and CML Installation Guide to get more info about hardware requirements, installing CML, and using CML. I may add some CML setup tutorials to this course, but the documentation should tell you everything you need to know. Additionally, there are some great videos already available on YouTube running through the setup. Now, I will try to keep the course labs as small as possible so that they can be run with minimal hardware resources. I know not everyone has a powerful computer, so I want to make the labs as accessible as possible. To get my lab files, sign up at the same link as for the flashcards. It'll be in the video description. One more point about the labs. I recommend you make your own. If during your studies, a question pops into your mind like, what if I did this, what would happen? Try it out in a lab. That's a great way to learn. Here's a screenshot of what CML looks like. I'm using it in dark mode here, hence the dark background, but there is a light mode too. As we go through the labs, I'll introduce some features of CML, but if you do purchase and install CML, I recommend spending some time getting familiar with it yourself and making your own labs. Now, one more question some of you might have about the labs. What about GNS3 and EVENG? GNS3 and EVENG are two other popular network emulation platforms. It seems these days that EVENG is more popular and GNS3 less so, but both are great tools. Unlike CML, GNS3 and EVENG are both free, although EVENG has a paid version. However, the iOS files you need to run Cisco devices in GNS3 and EVENG are not free. Only the GNS3 and EVENG platforms themselves are free. Now, it is possible to run the CML iOS files in GNS3 or EVENG, but it is prohibited by the CML End User License Agreement, so I can't recommend it. I will not provide GNS3 or EVENG lab files in this course, but I will provide the device starting configuration files so you can recreate the labs in GNS3 or EVENG if you prefer. Just recreate the topology and copy and paste the configuration into the devices. However, let me repeat that CML is my recommended platform for CCNP labs and it is Cisco's official platform. So that is the introduction to the course. I introduced the NCORE exam and certification, compared it to the CCNA, gave some tips for studying for the NCORE exam, and explained the flashcards and labs for the course. I hope you will find this course very helpful in your studies. My CCNA course has already helped thousands of people study for and pass the CCNA exam, and I hope to help thousands more study for and pass NCORE. Feel free to leave a comment with any questions you have, or join the discussion on the Discord server. In the next video, we'll get right into the first topic of the course. Before finishing this video, let me thank my JCNP level channel members. To become a member, please click the join button under the video. Thanks to Yonatan, Boson Software, Velva Jacum, George, Funny Dart, Nasir, Gustavo, Gerard, Marcel, Pavel, Dragos, Mayer, Mason, Vitaus, Gina, Nehemia, Bold1C1U, Mark, Yaro, Michael, Gerald, Gabriel, Renan, Hector, Ali, Mara, R. Nelson, Roji, Rascal Roy, Owad, Arpad, Five Feet, Daniel, Emiliano, Leonardo, Tricky Mickey, and Scott. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but thank you so much for your support. Thanks to you and my other supporters, I am able to make these videos and release them for free on YouTube, so I really appreciate the support. Another great way to support the channel is to like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe. So if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you did any of those. Thanks for watching. Thank you.